quantitative forecasting methods mean to use numerical data. Now, numerical data only exists in the past, and we need to see if we have enough historical data that it can be deemed valid enough to draw some insight into what may happen in the future. If it's not possible to get more high-quality historical numerical data, then perhaps this method isn't worth doing. Or at least we should treat the outcome with the same acceptance of low quality as the data put into the model. We have extrinsic and intrinsic quantitative methods from outside the firm or data from within the firm. So if we consider an extrinsic quantitative method of forecasting, that could be something like drawing in historical whole market data, such as if you sell cars, how many cars were sold in total in your country? Or if you sell ice cream, gathering historical weather data and forecast weather data, which is relevant to match with historic sales data. Then we might also do something a little more clever with some of that data, something such as some regression analysis. I know, big statistical word, but it's not so scary. Regression means trying to work out if something influences something else. Now for us, that could be, does something influence our demand, and how? For example, does the weather influence ice cream sales? I think we know the answer to that one. Finding causational relationships is helpful because I might have some quite good knowledge of what the weather is going to be like tomorrow, and if I knew how the weather and ice cream sales are correlated, I could use tomorrow's weather forecast to help predict tomorrow's ice cream sales. Now, we might all know in our hearts that if it's a hotter day, more ice cream will be sold, but by how much? If we have the weather forecast that tomorrow will be 100 degrees Fahrenheit, how many ice creams can we forecast we will sell based on past historical data and past weather data? We can get historical data on ice cream sales and other relevant things such as the temperature on those days, which we have excellent reason to believe is an influencing factor. Now we want to understand much better how one factor affects our forecast demand. This is where regression analysis can help. First, we need to be recording historical data. We need a database of the historical weather and how much ice cream we sold on those days. With that information, we could plot the historical daily weather temperature against ice cream sales. Maybe we're lucky enough to get a kind of line of best fit, and we can see a positive correlation on the scatter graph. And we can use that to help predict ice cream sales tomorrow or next week based on the weather forecast. Now, a slightly more complex example in the travel industry. We might have a feeling that when there's an especially cold winter in New York, more New Yorkers book holidays to Mexico in the summer. Now, if I'm a travel agent selling holidays to Mexico, such an idea is very interesting to me. So how could I test it? Well, again, I need historical data. I might plot the previous 10 years of how hot or cold those winters were with the number of holidays to Mexico sold. And if there's a pattern, if we could see a trend line, we might think that there's a correlation. Now, correlation, when one variable seems to have a connection or relationship with another variable, does not mean causation. Causation means that one variable caused the other. Correlation is not causation. And we need to be finding causation relationships because we want to use it to predict our dependent variable, our demand. As a silly example of random things that have been found to happen to be correlated but clearly are not caused by each other, someone once, who the hell knows who or why, someone once found that the plot of the per-person consumption of mozzarella cheese in the United States every year, going back over a decade, happened to correlate extremely well with the number of engineering doctorate degrees awarded. Fascinating. But here, in such a silly example, I think we can see that there's no causation between the two. 
but they are very well correlated over that time period. Now this is a whole field of statistical science that could probably be talked about for weeks on its own. It's just important to remember that regression means making a hypothesis, I think this might influence demand, taking historical data on both variables, comparing them and seeing if there's a trend, and probably using some common sense on whether it's possibly, plausibly, a causation relationship or just a coincidental, coincidental correlation. You may have heard of the phrase econometrics. Econometrics is really the same thing, doing regression analysis, but for economists. Economists can use regression analysis when trying to make their economic models. They might be seeing if one factor relates to another factor, such as does the disposable income of a group of people correlate with their expenditure, their spending? Now, I'm sure they do lots of clever stuff and we don't need to understand all of it. But it's possible that some of these clever people or other research groups have already done some big market research that we can simply find and use to help our forecast. So, top forecasting tip. See what existing forecasts have already been made by others. Maybe you sell cars and the National Automobile Association have already had a multi-million dollar analysis of the future car sales of the USA done by some mega consultancy and published their findings. See if you can find and use such data that might help your team make your own forecast. To get even more value from it, Find out what data sources they used and what assumptions they made. Now, some of the problems with using this extrinsic data, this extrinsic analysis, is that it can be blind to short-term issues. The historical data may have had major, unique events that influenced it, and it simply can't take account of the unusual events that may happen in the future, even if everybody knows something special is going to happen next month. Intrinsic quantitative analysis means using numerical data from inside the company. This is probably the most common method of forecasting, simply looking at the quantity of what we've sold, made, done in the past and using that to guide what we will probably sell in the future. Now this also has a big name. It can be called time series analysis but it basically just means to analyse a data series, a data set, over a historical time period, and trying to use that statistically to estimate, calculate what could be in the future. The most mainstream time series analysis method might be using a simple moving average of the last few days, the few months or years of historical data, to help predict next month or next year. And there are also some common but slightly more mathematically sophisticated ways of using that data to help extrapolate into the future, such as exponential smoothing, or some really big words like time series decomposition, pattern analysis, Fourier analysis. It's a science in its own right. But the problem with looking at historical data alone to try and predict the future is simply that it's only using history. It's a bit like trying to drive your car by looking in the rearview mirror. So, beware of the limitations of only using historical data, however much mathematical magic the wizards have done to it. <laughs>